This is Electric Universe Geology Earth News. This is a road cut north of Price, Utah. It contains layers of coal and shale. They're kind of hard to distinguish, but there's a coal mine just north of here with these same layers being dug out every day. So there's lots of coal in this formation. Some of these layers that trend to the north are coal. The entire area trends to the north, formation after formation for many, many miles. I believe this coal is not from vegetation. Uh, Dr. Thomas Gold, professor, also feels that coal is not from vegetation. He thinks it's from the deep earth, from volcanoes, and it comes up from below. But he makes a really good argument that it's not vegetation. I'll have a link underneath of the video to an article concerning his work. I'll have a link to an article from the USGS, U.S. Geologic Service, um, discussing the coal in the book cliffs. It's actually a 1909 article, but it's extremely scientific and detailed. There are probably more detailed articles since then, but I like the 1909 article. It's fascinating. So let's look at the map of where we're looking at right now. Here we have the book cliffs. This is Utah, Colorado over here. Wyoming is up to the north. Here's Price. The road cut that we just saw is right in this section right here. There's a coal mine just to the north. And all of this trends to the north. All of these layers trend in the same direction. All of these trend to the north. I believe it was from a north wind. There's layers of sediment, and in between the layers of sediment, there's coal, 800 million tons, and 4 trillion barrels of oil. All of it trending in the same direction, as if it's the same process making the sediment that has sandwiches of coal and oil, massive quantities of both. So, it's kind of a different way of looking at things. Let me give you Dr. Gold's quote on coal. This is the quote from Dr. Gold. I'll read it halt, halt, yeah, haltingly. The coal we dig is hard, brittle stuff, but it was once a liquid because we find embedded in the middle of a six-foot seam of coal such things as a delicate wing of some animal or a leaf of a plant. They are undestroyed, absolutely preserved, with every cell in that fossil filled with exactly the same coal as all the coal on the outside. The fact that coal contains fossils does not prove that it is a fossil fuel. It proves exactly the opposite. Those fossils you find in coal prove that coal is not made from those fossils. How could you take a forest and mulch it, I assume it's mulch, mulch it all up so that it is a completely featureless big black substance and then find one leaf in it that is perfectly preserved? That's absolute nonsense. I agree. Dr. Gold feels that the, the, the coal and and hydrocarbons, oil, come from below, deep earth, volcanoes, and they come up to the surface. I disagree. But Dr. Gold really destroys the idea of vegetation being responsible for the matrix of coal, not just little fossils that are scattered hither and yon. So it's a different way of looking at it. I don't think he's correct concerning deep earth coming up liquid. I think it's cometary. I think there's a rain of oil and coal, and it's all trending in the same direction. It's all part of the sedimentary process, a catastrophic, cometary, sedimentary process. So these layers might be completely different than what most people think they are. They're not from vegetation. Vegetation wouldn't make these nice, flat, smooth layers so close to the surface. There's not enough pressure to turn this into coal, unless some miracle had thousands of feet or miles above it squeezing down and then it all disappeared. Magic elevator crap. So, it's a different way of looking at coal. Thank you.